and thanks for joining us. I'm Jeunesse Castonguay, VP at Clarius Mobile Health. We'd like to thank Ashley and our friends at AIUM for the opportunity to bring you today's educational event. The popularity of point of care ultrasound or POCUS has grown dramatically across specialties, including obstetrics and midwifery by delivering the ability to make a quicker and more accurate diagnosis at the bedside than can be made with palpitation and Doppler alone. We'll be introducing you very shortly to today's expert guest speaker, Dr. Fred Ushakov, joining us from London, who'll focus today on second trimester POCUS exams. But first, I want to welcome everyone who's joined us today from all corners of the world. It's also my pleasure to introduce you to your host. Dr. Oran Frankel is trained in emergency medicine in California. A passionate POCUS educator, Dr. Frankel has been using point of care ultrasound his entire career. He now practices in a busy academic teaching hospital in Vancouver as an emergency physician. When he's not saving lives, Dr. Frankel serves as chairman of our Clarius Medical Advisory Board, helping deliver educational content like today's webinar in our new Clarius classroom now with over 100 on-demand video tutorials. Dr. Frankel, over to you. Thanks, Janez. Good to be here on a topic that's near and dear to our hearts in emergency medicine. Um, it's also the rise of point of care ultrasound in obstetric care. One of the places we think uh, point of care ultrasound can really have one of its most profound impacts on the clinical care we provide to our patients. In kind of setting the, the stage for our discussion, I wanted to just kind of go over a little bit of the, the literature that we found and uh, up to date kind of review article of the state of the art of where point of care ultrasound is in obstetrics and gynecology. And we know that the the rapid technical development and portability of ultrasound machines over the recent years has really had a profound impact like you alluded to uh, in both general medicine and in obstetrics and gynecology. And it's important to appreciate the difference that point of care ultrasound is different for those who are new to it from conventional and radiology performed ultrasound in that it's rapid, it's a limited study performed at the bedside for really a specific diagnostic or therapeutic purpose. Point of care ultrasound is really suitable for especially time critical scenarios. And depending on the situation, the dynamics, the course and the results of any therapy can be observed in real time. So point of care can really be performed by the same clinician who is making the treatment decisions uh, and has the advantage of knowing the patient's background and symptoms. And they can also be easily repeated at multiple points in time. And the immediate diagnosis is particularly relevant in obstetrics and gynecology when delayed diagnosis or can prevent, uh, can lead to complications both and with critical outcomes for mother and fetus. And so point of care ultrasound really can be considered a routine extension of regular clinical practice for most obstetric clinicians, and it can give immediate answers to what could sometimes be life-threatening situations. The literature describes really high specificity and sensitivity in point of care scans, and in obstetrics, ultrasound can be used to monitor the course of any pregnancy from five weeks of gestation to full term. Midwives and obstetricians could use point of care ultrasound to confirm an intrauterine pregnancy, fetal viability, the number of fetuses, and gestational age. And then there can be monitoring of the pregnancy, as we'll learn in the second and third trimesters, to assess the fetal lie, fetal growth, well being, as well as placental position, and determine the level of amniotic fluid that can indicate various pathological circumstances that we'll get to. Finally, you know, we know that one of the limitations of point of care ultrasound deployment is the lack of accessible equipment uh, that can allow clinicians to really move around and scan all their patients. And so the introduction of these portable and more affordable machines really allows access for this imaging modality to more departments and even into remote and rural regions of the world. And publications on point of care ultrasound show that these diagnostic findings obtained with these portable systems really are similar to those generated with advanced specialized ultrasound machines in very specific clinical contexts. So before we get into our presentation to really present the content today, uh, we have people attending this webinar from all over the world, from all different walks of clinical practice. And it's always interesting to see where people are coming to. Uh, and we wanted to ask the question, what challenges or limitations do you face with your obstetric patients when you're restricted to really a physical examination with your hands and maybe your stethoscope? Have you experienced too broad of a differential diagnosis with your patient not knowing which way to go? And have you ended up actually experiencing or hearing of mistaken diagnoses that ultimately lead to uh, treatment challenges? Have you missed abnormalities in fetal development along the way that maybe could have been caught earlier with better access beyond just the physical exam? Have there been unanswered questions either to you or to your patients about what's going on with the pregnancy? Has there been unclear progress in the pregnancy during duration of the term that may have been answered with more imaging beyond just the hands? 
Or have you experienced or heard of patients experiencing stress or potentially losing confidence in their caregivers because they're not able to get some of their questions answered? So feel free to answer all of these. We'll leave it open for one more second here and we'll close it out. And it's no surprise, it's pretty across the board. A lot of unanswered questions being number one, but a lot of providers, thanks for answering all of these, experiencing broad differentials uh, and lack of confidence and stress, all of these seem to apply. And we really have a way forward beyond all of these challenges. And we can't think of anyone better to bring in to help address these challenges than Dr. Fred Ushtakov, who's our expert speaker today. He's an expert in fetal medicine and echocardiography with over 30 years of experience in ultrasound and international practice within the world leading institutions. Dr. Ushakov is founder and managing director of City Ultrasound. He's the founder of the London School of Ultrasound, where he has lectured doctors and sonographers from more than 100 countries. Dr. Ushakov also founded the Early Fetal Scan Conference, a scientific event that seeks to raise awareness among professionals to recognize and manage different fetal abnormalities. He works part-time at the UCLH Fetal Medicine Unit, having gained recognition as probably their most highly skilled ultrasound operator. Dr. Ushakov, it's a pleasure to have you and over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Aaron, and thank you uh, for Clarus for giving me a uh, possibility to talk uh, on this uh, prestigious meeting of IUAIM. And uh, I would like just to tell that uh, I am fetal medicine doctor, so uh, my specialization actually is uh, looking for fetal abnormalities. For, uh, but I think that uh, invention and development of the portable ultrasound machines are making huge difference in uh, current obstetrics. And I would like uh, just. To, to discuss what I think uh, the future of uh, portable ultrasound. Uh, so uh, during preparation for this uh, presentation, I found very uh, nice uh, guidelines by uh, IUIM uh, regarding the essential uh, second and third trimester scan. And uh, I think that uh, the topic that I will talk today, it's a little bit different from this uh, standard obstetric scan uh, because uh, there are few uh, differences between uh, this focus uh, uh, ultrasound comparing to ultrasound that uh, described as essential. And uh, this is the, the table uh, that uh, I prepared that I think that uh, for essential focus ultrasound near the bed of the patient. Uh, actually, we, we have just limited uh, questions that we need to, to uh, focus and to answer. And the first uh, question, of course, is uh, how many age, uh, babies we have. Uh, second question that's probably even more important is to talk about uh, if the baby has cardiac activity or not, because if it has no cardiac activity, so it's not viable pregnancy. Uh, third question is about presentation. Uh, fourth is amniotic fluid volume uh, after its position of the placenta. And the last one is uh, to, to do basic uh, photometry of the, of the uh, baby, uh, just to, to understand all stage of the pregnancy or actually to compare the growth of the baby. And if we're uh, talking about uh, what was described by IAIUM uh, as a standard scan, they also they're talking about anatomical survey and uh, uh, checking of the maternal cervix and checking of that adnexa. I think it's more advanced uh, and uh, we will just focus on, on uh, essential focus uh, scan. Uh, so who uh, will perform POCUS scan? I think it's uh, the, the, the main people who will perform, the main professionals will be primary care medical professionals, or they are all be uh, a gun specialist. They will be midwives. They will be, uh, for instance, we're working in UK. So in UK, uh, GP, general practitioner, uh, they are managing uh, some of the pregnancies. And uh, it's very uh, good for them to have this uh, small pocket machine that they can and just take from the, uh, their pocket and to check, to check in their offices. Of course, in the situation of the a &E, paramedics, uh, in urgent situation that uh, involved a pregnant woman, so it will be uh, extremely useful to have uh, this ultrasound uh, machine and to check. So who, uh, why uh, to perform focus scan? Uh, I think uh, in modern uh, medicine, uh, that the first group of uh, situation is acute diagnosed that we have no time 
actually to bring uh, the lady to the uh, big room with big ultrasound machine uh, because she had or because she has she's uh, practicing labor or she has a, a premature rupture of membranes so different other situations so this is acute situation that uh, the doctor or or the other medical professionals uh, just uh, facing first time the patient that uh, can use uh, ultrasound machine to, to make a very uh, fast and urgent diagnosis. And second group is uh, the, uh, the office of the uh, all general practitioner or obstetric and gynecologist that uh, you actually, you're using ultrasound for reassurance, you're using ultrasound to monitor fetal growth, you're using ultrasound to monitor fetal well-being, and of course in low resource settings, uh, ultrasound machine like this, actually uh, I'm, I'm absolutely sure that can be also used for anomaly scans or for, for detection of uh, not all, but uh, the major uh, structure abnormalities of the fetuses. Uh, and let's talk and uh, what what uh, how it's possible to do. So first, uh, the most important for me is uh, to check the ability of the pregnancy, and we are talking about second or third trimester viability. So, and uh, by checking viability, you are looking for the heart. So, and uh, why it's so important? Because if uh, if the pregnancy is not viable, so the management is completely different from viable pregnancy, and uh, that's why I'm absolutely sure that we need, uh, we must start uh, to scan from detection of uh, fetal activity, and uh, normal fetal heart rate is about. Uh, from 110 to 160. Uh, the heart rate at uh, second and third trimester is not stable, it is going up and down. And uh, when you are scanning, especially second trimester baby around that uh, bradycardia, that the heart, is, uh, heart rate is going down. And, uh, uh, but uh, usually it's very short and it doesn't mean any pathology of the, of the heart. And when you are doing this, if you have a reduction of the heart rate, so what I recommend is just to move transducer on the side and uh, to have a look on other structures and to come back uh, to have a look on the heart uh, just in, in few, uh, about uh, 10 seconds and you will see normal heart rate. So, and I also, because uh, uh, my special interest is uh, is the number of years a good starting point of, of detection of heart abnormality. And maybe uh, every professional need to know uh, this image of, for, for chamber view. So, and uh, this is just for, for, to, to demonstrate to you. So on the left side of the screen is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, the heart uh, with, the, uh, with the normal heart rate. And uh, on the right side of the screen, you can see actually the, the image of the, uh, of the same image with annotation. And you can see that you can see for, for all four chambers, uh, you can see the epics of the of the heart that uh, even for this uh, small machine you can get good diagnostic views of the heart even that uh, in a technical point of view because of this uh, so-called subcostal position uh, this rip is interferes with the image but you can uh, you can see a very decent decent uh, image of the heart and uh, i will next uh, video i will show you uh, how uh, actually what what we are doing uh, what i recommend is to do this movement around uh, the abdomen of the of the lady during this movement you are uh, searching for something that moves and something that moves is 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 uh, uh, Okay, the baby is usually moving, but it's something that moves and pumping uh, represent uh, the heart. And uh, so uh, by, and of course, it's very important also to show for, for your patient this movement of the heart because uh, it will reassure her and it will assure, reassure her uh, partner or because uh, seeing the heart, heart, uh, heartbeat on the screen is uh, actually very, very reassuring. And uh, also on this clip uh, later, I, I would like to show you how it's possible to do this uh, very easy approach to, to, to check baby's uh, heart.
at health. So uh, I found that a preset for, for uh, oh, general obstetrics is not the best uh, to check the heart. And uh, the fantastic preset uh, that uh, Clarius has is preset for, uh, for uh, echocardiography. I believe that it's a preset for adult echocardiography, but you can use it uh, for, uh, for checking of the structure of the heart. And as you can see, I am in love in the image of the four chamber view and uh, we can see the the structures of the heart uh, on this uh, this short clip and I, I believe that uh, uh, really because the heart abnormality are the most common uh, much more common the down syndrome uh, problems of the of the uh, fetus is fetal anomaly so it may be good that uh, the professionals even uh, of the primary care uh, will learn how to how to do basic uh, heart examination. So uh, we'll go further. And the next step, uh, we'll talk about position of the fetus. Uh, position of the fetus is important uh, because uh, Actually, uh, the most important moment uh, to see the position is uh, during labor, and I'm starting to scan to do uh, in transverse cross section of the uh, suprapubic area, and in this cross section after rotating transducer, as as you can see on the uh, video, uh, 90 degrees. Uh, you can see in this case that uh, baby is a breech because you can identify. Uh, structures like uh, bones, long bones of the femur. Uh, so you can see that uh, the, there are long bones of the legs. And also uh, you can uh, go uh, through the uh, other structures of, of, of the baby. And here, as you can see, I, I did longitudinal cross section of the lower part of the spine. And you can see also the uh, sacrum. And uh, so this, in this case, the baby is in the bridge position. And I'm going with transducer slowly, slowly up. Uh, to the uh, fundus of the uh, abdomen, uh, full of the mother, and I can uh, see here the, the head and the fundus. So this baby is in longitudinal position and it is uh, breech. Uh, of course, uh, the position is more important uh, for a situation that uh, you have uh, a lady with contractions, so uh, she, 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 uh, she is going to deliver the baby. And I, I believe that uh, this is uh, very, very useful to, to use in the situation inside of the delivery uh, room uh, because uh, nobody wants to have uh, undiagnosed uh, bridge delivery. Of course, you can use uh, fingers, but ultrasound machine, I believe it's more effective. So position of placenta. Uh, why it's important? Uh, because uh, one of the most serious complications of, uh, of obstetrics uh, is a low-lying placenta, uh, which can, uh, can be associated with the antenatal bleeding, and uh, it can be associated, of course, with the bleeding during, uh, the, during uh, delivery itself, and especially placenta previa, that placenta is covering the internal os, and uh, in this uh, situation, a uh, transabdominal scan is uh, very good as a screening, uh, but if you have any suspicion of placenta previa, of course, you, you need to use also transvaginal uh, transducer, and uh, Clarus has uh, another transducer, which is transvaginal. And uh, from a point, of, uh, a point of care, ultrasound is not so important if it's anterior posterior. So for me, it's important that it's not low line placenta, it's not placenta pre previa. And uh, uh, everybody needs to know that uh, there is phenomenon of so-called placenta migration, that a low line placentas uh, that we can see in the uh, second trimester, uh, they can uh, go up uh, because of growth of the low segment of the uterus and uh, this low position of the uh, placenta can be uh, resolved. So let's see how I'm doing the position as they're looking for position placenta. Is the same uh, position that you are putting suprapubic uh, the transducer. And uh, what you can see here is uh, the, the bladder. And uh, I'm doing rotation uh, 90 degrees, and I'm getting mid sagittal view of the uh, of the uh, cervix. So this is bladder, and this is cervix, and this is uh, lower part of the uh, uterus. And here, uh, what I can see, this is internal os, internal os free 
of the uh, of the placenta tissue. So in this case, placenta is high, and uh, I just need to find it. So I, I'm doing the movements, as you can see, there with the uh, slowly, slowly going up. And in this specific case, you can see that uh, baby again is breech, but we're looking for placenta and placenta here. So placenta has a hyper echogenic appearance. Uh, second trimester, usually it has a homogenic appearance. Sometimes you can see uh, not big uh, black areas inside, but Jenny is homogeneous and it's completely different from the uh, uh, hypoechogenic uh, myometrium. Uh, you need to be careful because sometimes uh, there are contractions, uh, local contractions of the uterus and they can mimic a placenta. So, but they are never uh, having this uh, uh, bright uh, hyperechogenic uh, appearance. And uh, so be careful. So if you have uh, Two, two places that you may, may think uh, this is placenta or this is not placenta. The placenta is supposed to be uh, much brighter and has a very clear uh, division of the border between the hyperechogenic uh, myometrium and hyperechogenic placenta. And as you can see, I'm moving from side to side in order to see uh, to, to all the uh, all the stand of placenta. But again, uh, the clinically, uh, what is important is uh, the, the 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 lower part of the placenta, uh, which is uh, coming close to the uh, internal os, uh, because uh, this this it can be associated with antenatal, antenatal bleeding. And Dr. Ushakov, you had mentioned one of the times to do a point of care scan might be in the setting of maternal trauma. Uh, what would yes. signs of a uh, like a potential abruption look like if you were concerned about uh, you know an impact of fetal viability? And in the case of abruption of placenta, of placenta, you can see a hematoma, a collection of the dark. Uh, uh, duck, uh, or it can be heterogenic uh, fluid. Uh, between placenta and uh, and the uh, uterine wall, and of course, if if it happens, it's it's ur very urgent because uh, this is concealed uh, uh, hemorrhage, and you need uh, to transfer uh, the mother to the hospital and uh, to open the the vein, and you need you need to have urgent uh, treatment, and of course, you you're supposed to check first a heartbeat. Uh, because sometimes the trauma is so so severe that actually a baby can can die. So, but uh, I think the most common complication is uh, is abruption of the placenta. Thank you. Uh, and I would like to talk about also amniotic fluid assessment. Uh, why it's important? Because uh, amniotic fluid is the uh, the uh, environment of the baby, and uh, the or increase or decrease of amniotic fluid has a very significant clinical role in management of placenta. So from point of, uh, point of care ultrasound, uh, I believe that uh, because uh, we, do, we need to do things fast, so uh, the, the preferable way is just to, to, to subjective estimate the amount of fluid, amount of the dark areas. And people who are doing ultrasound regularly, they actually can do this easily. And uh, because different measurements, is especially the measurement that, that we are doing in fetal medicine called amniotic fluid index, it takes a long time. And actually, I, I don't think that it's really a measurement that we... Uh, what we can use is uh, to, uh, to measure the DPS to do this. And for, for clinical purposes, the oligohydramnios, so reduced amount of the fluid is if the measurement of the uh, deep ventricle pocket is less than two centimeters. And increase of the fluid called polydramnios is if this uh, pocket is more than eight centimeters. So, and uh, how we're doing, we're starting uh, the same uh, starting point. And uh, what, what I would like to mention that actually, uh, from doing the same uh, movement that I'm moving from uh, from down to up to the uh, to the uh, preg uh, pregnant uh, uh, belly, uh, actually I'm looking for uh, position of placenta, position of the baby, and uh, the amount of amniotic fluid. In this case, you can see placenta is posterior, and the black areas uh, around the baby here 
this is uh, the, uh, the, the, the areas of amniotic fluid. So it's normal uh, amount of amniotic fluid. And uh, I'm rotating, I will rotate transducer in, uh, in uh, sagittal view. Uh, and I will find the, the biggest pocket of, of the fluid and I will perform measurement. Uh, let's see. I'm doing this, I'm rotating transducer, finding the most, uh, the, 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 the widest pocket, vertical pocket, and I, I'm doing a measurement. Uh, let's see how it's going here. This is probably the, the, the best pocket, and I'm, I'm moving a little bit transducer. Important to, to, to do uh, the vertical position of the transducer, not uh, lateral, because you will overestimate uh, the amount of fluid. So it's, it's supposed to be vertical to the floor. It's, and uh, here uh, I, I will find caliper. So I'm looking just from side to side and uh, we'll find the caliper and uh, we'll measure the, the fluid. Is it and safe if it, you're just doing the deepest pocket uh, and yeah, you're, deepest, you kind of know you can just sort of look at the side and kind of estimate by the centimeters yeah, that are there? Exactly, uh, yeah, exactly. This is the, the measurement. And so I'm just measuring from side to side. So uh, oligator amnios, why it's important because uh, there are three main uh, reasons for the oligator amnios. First is premature rupture of membranes, uh, but usually the ladies, they have specific complaints. So they have leakage of the fluid and they know this. Uh, second is severe renal anomaly and it can be or absence of kidneys or for instance, obstructive foropathy. So different uh, renal anomalies that uh, they are uh, associated with a reduction of amniotic, uh, or sorry, of the, uh, of the urinary output of the baby, uh, they will produce uh, oligohydramnios and a severe fetal growth restriction also can be associated with oligohydramnios, but actually uh, you will see this on the measurement of the baby, that baby is small, this oligohydramnios associated with small babies and uh, reduced amount of fluid, uh, we have uh, poor resolution because amniotic fluid creates some acoustical windows and uh, the, the views usually are very, very poor, uh, not just for with clarus, for, for, for with the good machines also we have uh, poor views. And polydramnios with a pocket more than eight uh, centimeters is uh, most commonly associated with diabetes mellitus of the, or, or the pregnancy or pre-pregnancy diabetes. It can be associated with malformations and that's why it's very important to check uh, the structures of the baby, especially uh, the stomach because uh, or duodenal atresia or esophageal atresia can be uh, associated with uh, polydramnios, uh, even severe. Uh, fetal hydrops associated with polydramnios and other pathological causes. Uh, but I must uh, to mention that in majority of the cases, not severe polydramnios uh, can be just idiopathic. It means that we have no real uh, reason uh, to find why uh, there is a reduction of fluid. And uh, polydramnus many times, uh, it's also associated with unstable fetal life. It means that you are scanning now uh, the baby's head down and in, in few minutes the, the head can go up. So, uh, and the last topic that I would like to mention is a topic uh, how to do uh, basic measurements of the baby. And we're talking about uh, basic measurements is a measurement of the head. And uh, the most commonly used uh, measurement and the, mo the most uh, simple for, 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 for performance is uh, to, to measure uh, B parietal diameter, BPD. And I believe that it's my opinion, but fetometry, so the, the, the measurement of the baby is the most difficult part of essential focus training. So you need to have special training to, to get uh, cross sections that uh, we need to, to, to measure. And uh, the uh, BPD is measured on the level of thalami and cavum septum pellucidi. And I will show you what does it mean. Uh, if you can see it's cerebellum that looks like uh, glasses, uh, cerebellar hemispheres, it means that you are not in the correct plane. And uh, typically in, uh, in the United States, I think uh, the measurement is taken from the outer edge of the proximal uh, skull to the inner edge of the distal skull. And uh, I will show you one second on next uh, 
image. So here, this is the uh, how I'm getting the image of the head. And here, what we, we must see in the correct cross-section uh, for measurement of BP. So we, we need to, to get this uh, ellipsoid uh, cross-section of the head. Uh, we need to, to see uh, phallic cerebris of this, this uh, structure anterior to the, uh, to in the anterior part of the, uh, of the head is uh, phallic cerebri. After phallic cerebri is divided by two uh, lines uh, with the dark uh, fluid field uh, space inside is called cavum septum pilus. So it's extremely important to see this uh, structure. Uh, after you can see two hypercogenic uh, thalami from uh, two, two sides. And in UK, we're also uh, looking for the measurement of the lateral ventricle in the same cross section. But in other countries, uh, sometimes the cross section is a little bit different. So in uh, in majority of the countries, the measurement is from the outer uh, point to the inner point of the skull. In UK, again, we are usually uh, we are using different way, and we are measuring from outer to outer. And here, this is the red point, how it's uh, measured in UK. And uh, let's see the, for the for the clip. So uh, I, again, uh, what uh, I already did uh, position of the baby. I know where is uh, the head, and here I'm getting uh, the image of the head, uh, uh, and uh, because baby is breech. Uh, in many, many cases uh, for breach is quite uh, easy to get this cross section. Sometimes if the baby is kephalic, so it's more difficult because the head is, uh, is oblique. And uh, I'm putting my calipers uh, like we're doing in United Kingdom from outer to, to, to outer, but again, in other countries, you put it to the inner and you need to know which, uh, which charts uh, you are using because charts, uh, different chairs will have different uh, different measurements and here i also doing the circumference of the head so using the uh, this measurement why it's important to do uh, the, those measurements uh, the most important thing uh, is that uh, if you don't know uh, for instance the the stage of pregnancy so uh, in the same situation of trauma for instance so, so the uh, the woman has uh, is, is pregnant you have no idea how far away she is pregnant uh, there is no any documentation about your uh, her uh, pre pregnancy so by doing those simple measurements, you can roughly tell uh, how far away uh, she's pregnant. And this is, uh, can be a critical moment uh, for management of, of uh, this uh, situation. Uh, because, uh, for instance, if it's early pregnancy, so you can't save the baby because it's not viable. If it's advanced uh, pregnancy, so you can, you can save uh, the baby. So it's very important to, to know how to do correct measurements. And here, as you can see, I also doing a measurement of the FEMA. So uh, in very, very short clip, I was able to do measurement of the head, measurement of the abdomen and measurement of the FEMA. So yeah, I would echo uh, in emergency situations for sure. Uh, you know, it's, we would jump from identifying if there's a heart rate or not, and then doing, uh, you know, fetal biometry definitely changes the treatment algorithms yeah, yeah, in the acute yeah, urgent yeah, care. Of course. Yeah. And uh, just this uh, for, f to finalize the, the, this talk, why to use handhold ultrasound device? Why again, not to go to big room, to have big machine with few screens and to do, uh, to do the scan in this room. Uh, uh, again, it's, it depends uh, on the settings. And uh, if, if you are, if you are not sitting in this room, like I'm sitting uh, all my time. So I have big room, big machine, many, many screens, uh, many, many connections of this machine. But uh, actually, if you are sitting in, in a clinic that uh, in remote place, uh, so you can, uh, or you, you have, uh, uh, once when, uh, when I was much younger, I was working in different places per week. So I was working for really more, more than 10 physical places uh, per week. So, uh, and of course you can't take big machine, even that, uh, you know, mobile machine also can be differently mobile. So, but if you have mobile machine that you can put in the pocket, so it's very useful and very, very good to use. So uh, wireless connection. So it's also, uh, there are a lot of problems with, uh, with uh, wires. So uh, it's, it's good that you have just by click, 
uh, you, you can connect, uh, you can you open in, uh, the app and the app is connecting to the ultrasound machine without any wires. So you don't need to have any external power supply. Uh, so you can do, uh, do, do the scan, even the situation of the street uh, that uh, you have no any, any access to the power. Uh, uh, it's uh, in the past, uh, there were a lot of question about quality of imaging because uh, of course a portable ultrasound machine uh, can't produce uh, the, 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 the level of quality uh, like uh, uh, stationary big uh, ultrasound machine. Uh, it's absolutely clear, uh, but uh, I was uh, very happy to scan with uh, Clarius and to see that uh, the quality of scan, the general quality scan is good for diagnostic reasons and for diagnostic purposes. And it's really uh, very, very nice that in this small uh, piece of, of uh, engineering, you, you have uh, this small piece piece of engineering uh, can produce so, so good quality of imaging. Uh, the, uh, the package of, uh, of uh, hand uh, hold uh, device can be, uh, can include, I'm talking about biometry packages, I'm talking about uh, additional uh, software pet packages of the machine. So they can include uh, very uh, important parameters of, of, uh, of fetal well-being, biometry, and it's, it's there really useful, again, in the situation that you are standing in front of the patient. Uh, it, 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 I think it's uh, the, the good thing that you have a cloud cloud is uh, amazing because you are storing so uh, the big problem is connection of ultrasound machine to uh, to to the uh, cloud or to some program that stores the image and if you have a, a portable uh, device that also send in the images to the cloud and uh, safely stored in the cloud so it's it's very important especially in the situation of telemedicine so you are doing scan on the street uh, because you are a paramedic and actually you can see something that you don't know what what does it mean and uh, through the cloud uh, the the specialist in fetal medicine or specialist in other uh, in other special speciality uh, can uh, help you to recognize and to to to, to, to see what was the proper diagnosis. Uh, that's why I think that uh, the, the portable ultrasound de device for those purposes will be a fantastic solution. So conclusions, uh, super portable ultrasound scanners are powerful tool for primary care, care medical professionals. Uh, current ultrasound devices are capable to cover a wide range of obstetric diagnostic tasks. And I believe that in, in low resources uh, settings, they also actually can do even better. And uh, I believe that we need to, to, to have a special education pathways and programs uh, for training of professionals, how to use correctly uh, this type of uh, devices, uh, any types of devices by ultrasound. Well, thank you very much. And uh, thank you, Ron, for, for having me here. Yeah, great. Thank you so much for that really informative uh, presentation, Dr. Ushakov. We encourage everyone to use the Q&A in the bottom. And, uh, please fire your questions off. We have some time to just show off a quick kind of synopsis of what Dr. Ushakov covered. I was gonna do a brief demo here with a live model and hoping, you know, second trimester ultrasound is definitely outside of my normal wheelhouse in acute care. But I'm wondering if you can kind of talk me through, I watched your demo videos. So I'm gonna try and replicate if you can help me walk through the steps. I've got my curvilinear, I'm on obstetric setting. Uh, first, I'm gonna sort of do what you were saying, sweep, looking for something moving. So there's something yeah, moving. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, but I want to find go, heart, go. right? Everybody wants yeah, to see heart. Yeah, you need to go further. So this is head. Oh. So, oh, there we go. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. yeah fantastic. So Great. yes, please. Oh, you can enlarge. So you have very nice cross section from the uh, abdomen and thorax. So the, the round uh, structure uh, down uh, here, uh, you've seen it was stomach. And now you're getting the, the, the views of the heart. It's practically four chamber views of the heart. Right. And as you can right. see, the baby has normal heart rate. And then we were going to yeah. um, find a lie, right? So, so here I am, I'm gonna start at the bladder and yeah. there's bladder and then go sagittal, yeah. like you said. And then right there is the head, there's head right at the bottom. So this baby, yeah. um, yeah, so so he is 
Davis Kefalic. So you can oh, see right the bladder, right. you can see the, the cervix, and this is vagina. Right. So here's bladder. So here, uh, this is yeah. 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 Okay, now here's the internal yeah. os, like yeah, right in here, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. So then yeah. head down. Yeah. And then you said to kind of follow. Um, I'll kind of combine the moments here and there. Is this placenta right here and posterior? Yes, placenta is right. posterior. And yeah. if you can go uh, back to the cervix just to see that it's not coming down. Right. Yeah, yeah, go back. So uh, it's posterior placenta. So it's, uh, it's quite difficult uh, if the head is uh, shadowing. Mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. the lower segment to tell the position of the placenta. So right. what I'm uh, usually trying, I'm trying to move the head uh, by pressure, gentle pressure on the abdomen and to see the internal os. But it, it, it can be tricky. Yeah, so, I think I'm going to say yeah. that's maybe beyond my, my skill level. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> okay. <laughs> I feel happy I saw the placenta and identified. Uh, and then last, we're going to try, I need you to talk me through the BPD. Um, so yeah. I know that this is kind of the long axis here. There's the spine coming down yes, in the head. Correct. So I know I want it in yeah. the middle. And so now I need to rotate the transducer. Is that what I would have to do? Absolutely. To get... Yeah. So you need okay. to rotate transducer about 90 degrees. Yeah. Okay, great. And yeah. maybe kind of blow it up a little and tell yeah. me oh, when. Fantastic. Is it somewhere like around here, right here? Just a little bit lower. Yeah, this is great position. Okay, and then I'll just put the caliper on. Baby moves. Um, and I can just choose the BPD here as a setting. Yeah. And since I blew it up, uh, I'm yeah. gonna go outer. I'm in North America, so I'm going outer to inner, right? Yeah. And maybe I like kind of slide that to what, right yes. there. So. Yes, Okay, Fantastic. 18 weeks, 18 weeks? Where are we at? 18 weeks, oh, spot on, there we go. Okay, Wow. Great. okay, great. Well done. All right. Well, thanks so much. Yeah. So that was, a, you know, that was pretty straightforward to do the quick scan, survey scan. Um, thanks so much to our model and her fetus for showing off for us today. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, so we have a bit of time. You, We're going to hand, um, you know, I thanks so much for really showing kind of the value of, I think, what point of care ultrasound has for um, obstetric care. I, I'm a really big believer that this is one of its biggest opportunities in kind of expanding and really democratizing healthcare uh, internationally and equalizing access to care, particularly in rural and remote areas. We see that in British Columbia, and I think it's true kind of internationally as well, uh, that really point of care ultrasound can really improve uh, maternal and fetal safety with regular screenings that may not be accessible uh, normally with more complex and expensive machines. And then you get real time answers for really sudden and unexplained symptoms, women coming in with cramping, bleeding, leakage of fluids, uh, getting kind of to the bottom of what's going on and what needs to be done right away. And then you can really detect changes in maternal and fetal condition. Um, and then it really increases patient confidence. Like you said, everyone loves to see the heart on the screen. Uh, they love to see the four chambers of the heart beating. And you really need kind of good high definition imaging to be able to just see that and get that reassuring view. And then ultimately, uh, you know, in the reality of practice, it can really increase revenue and referrals in people's private clinics uh, when people have access to improved imaging and they're able to provide what they are considering a higher standard of care. Uh, it can really help on the, the clinical and business side too. So um, please use the Q&A here at the bottom. Uh, there's a lot of questions and it's good we have a lot yeah. of time. So uh, I'm going to let Janez take it home here uh, and close it out. And then we'll have about 10 minutes at the end to get back to questions. Absolutely. Um, just a quick quote here from Dr. Um, Shawnee Keys. One of the best things about Claris ultrasound is the imaging, which is super crisp and clear. It's beautiful and really amazing, especially compared to our other portable systems. It's like night and day. Um, so thank you, Dr. Frankel, for the live demo. That was so much fun. And thank you, Dr. Ushakov, for sharing your ultrasound exam, exam techniques to monitor mother and fetal health throughout the second trimester. Before we begin our live q and I'd like to take a minute to invite you to learn more about Clarius. So before we open the floor to your questions, here's a quick question for you. By answering this poll, you're providing consent for AIUM to share your contact information with us. So please do let us know if you'd like any further information about uh, Clarius HD for your practice. Our scanners are offered in over 90 countries. So select a quote for pricing to understand pricing and availability in your region. If you'd like to speak to one of our experts and you have some questions, we'll be happy to have one of our experts schedule a call with you to answer any questions you may have. You can book a Clarius demo where we'll set up a one-on-one -on -one Zoom um, without any lag um, to be able to 
go and show you ultrasound scanning uh, in action. Um, or if there's some features that, that you'd like to discuss um, or compare, we'd be happy to do that as well. You can also select the last option, select more tutorials, and we'll be able to send you some links to Claris Classroom video tutorials. So again, um, while you are completing this poll, I'm going to just tell you a little bit more about Clarius. So go ahead and take your time with the poll. Um, I'll take a minute to tell you a bit more about our Clarius C3 HD multi-purpose convex scanner that you saw in the live demo today, and also about our Clarius EC7 endocavity wireless scanner for early OB examination in gynecology. Just like our full family of products, these Claris HD scanners de deliver the highest definition ultrasound imaging in a wireless, affordable, and easy to use system. Claris is unrivaled for image quality in a handheld wireless ultrasound. It shows you the fine details you need to quickly investigate an area of concern and make a confident diagnosis on the spot to either bring comfort to your expecting patient or to expedite the right treatment plan. Each scanner is designed with eight beam formers and 192 elements that deliver the image quality and performance only found in traditional systems, but at a fraction of the cost. Artificial intelligence replaces complex knobs and buttons, making our scanners fast and easy to learn and use as your mobile device. Claris includes a comprehensive package for early OB, second and third trimester measurements, and now with support for multiple gestations. You simply select a fetus and choose the appropriate measurement like femur length, VPD, and abdominal circumference as you saw here today. Calculations are generated inside the app and workflow report. Claris is also wireless, freeing up space with zero footprint for high portability to scan patients anywhere they are at their bedside. You get free movement with no wires getting in the way, also making it so much faster to clean and disinfect or fully encase. Claris is equipped with liquid cooling and an optional fan to keep the scanner cool for long, longer examinations. Only Claris delivers wireless scanners that come with a free ecosystem that includes free apps for your iOS or Android devices with free updates, unlimited cloud storage to capture and manage your exams, and for unlimited users at no additional cost. Clarius Live delivers one-click telemedicine if you'd like to share live scanning with a colleague for a second opinion. Ultra affordable Claris HD scanner deliver the performance of traditional systems at a fraction of the cost. And now um, on to our next slide, um, you will see that our Claris scanner come with our newly redesigned Act One to automatically create a free animated video from the images and sin loops you capture and select during an exam. Simply ask your patient for their email and consent, uh, which you enter right in the app and Clarius will email your patients a link to this heartwarming movie that you see here. They also have the opportunity to purchase a bundle um, with the original imaging to create and share additional videos with various other themes. Act One is of course HIPAA and GDPR compliant. It's so much faster than using CDs, USBs, or printing, and with zero cost to you. Expecting parents are delighted with this free keepsake, they love that it's all online, easy to access and share with their friends and family. I'd now like to welcome back Dr. Ushakov and Dr. Frankel. Please use the questions icon in the menu bar to ask your questions for our great doctors. Um, and I do want to let everyone know that in the coming days, if you agree to share your contact information with us, either during registration or the poll, that we will email you a recording of today's webinar, as well as a copy of today's presentation. Um, and if you don't recall, if you provided permission, you may still do so in the closing survey. Uh, now on to your questions. Dr. Frankel, can I invite you to moderate our Q&A, please? Yeah, happy to. A lot of great questions, and we'll try to get through as many as we can here. The first one, I'm going to try and group them together here, Dr. Ushakov, for you, yep. is you. Uh, what do you do if you're looking at the DVP uh, and looking at the amniotic fluid, if there's something in the way, like a fetal part or umbilical cord? Um, what, what do you do in that situation? So I'm trying to avoid those uh, areas. So umbilical cord is controversial because some uh, clinicians will think that a single loop of umbilical cord uh, doesn't play a big role, so you can measure this uh, pocket. Uh, but I'm, I'm trying to avoid uh, this, uh, those structures. For sure, if the baby has leg or some, uh, some other anatomical structure, so you need to measure uh, the pocket until this uh, structure. Um, 
The uh, on the amniotic fluid question, it, does it apply just to second trimester or it's third trimester as well? No, it's applies for mostly for third trimester. Actually, at 20 weeks, we are not measuring when we are doing a normal scan. So uh, we are not uh, routing and not measuring this. So in majority of the cases, it's third trimester. So it's important. Third, so uh, the amniotic fluid is third trimester. Yes. Yeah, mostly. Okay, great, yeah. great, great. Um, do you think this is kind of a weighted question? I'm not sure, but uh, I'll, I'll pose it to you. Do you think point of care ultrasound is taking away the place of conventional radiology scans in obstetrics? I know my answer, no, but I'm curious what you Yeah, thinking. of course not. Of course not, because I think it's it will just involvement of uh, other uh, clinicians uh, that they are primary care uh, clinicians in uh, use of uh, this machine. And of course, uh, we, we need uh, to have a good quality, uh, big machines uh, for, for things that I'm doing, for instance, uh, checking for anomalies. Uh, uh, I uh, have special interest in uh, detection of anomalies at uh, 10. Uh, this, we need to have different machines. Yeah, and I would agree. And, and I think the evidence is in that it, it's not taking away from radiology studies at all, uh, at least in the other fields where it's been used. It's really just kind of improving the care delivered at the point of care. So, yeah, uh, great. Um, what is the best way to determine rupture of membranes with ultrasound? Like, what would you look for, I guess? Uh, I think it's, it's very controversial because uh, usually with rupture of membranes, it it's, uh, depends on the stage of the pregnancy. Earlier rupture, uh, there is a more significant reduction of amniotic fluid, especially if it's long-standing rupture of amniotic fluid. But uh, actually, we have uh, ultrasound alone, uh, not, it's not playing uh, uh, the sole role in diagnosis of rupture because you, you need to know about uh, history. So it's very important, uh, the history of lady having this uh, leakage of fluid. Uh, we need to put speculum, there are different ways. So ultrasound is, uh, can estimate the amount of fluid, but you can't uh, really do the diagnosis of rupture of membrane just by ultrasound. Yeah. It's, it's just one tool perhaps in your, in your yeah. kit. Yeah. Um, I, because I put it out there, I, I feel obligated to follow up on the question about abruption, placental abruption. Uh, and um, my understanding is the limitation is uh, if you don't see abruption, it doesn't mean it didn't happen, right? You can't rule it out. You could just rule it in. Is that right? Correct. Absolutely okay. correct. Because okay. usually abruption is so acute situation that actually uh, it depends how, how much blood is coming uh, uh, how, how much is uh, bleeding. Uh, so it's very unusual to have just concealed uh, hematoma. Uh, so usually there is also bleeding out and it's very difficult to estimate. So if you have, uh, you can't see abruption by scan, it does mean that there is no abruption. It's right. clinical. Right, right. The flip side is I've seen cases where it, it rapidly identified the abruption, which is what I was trying to get to, where it wasn't clinically obvious yet, uh, and was able to kind of save the fetus if it was viable um, in the setting of like an emergency section after trauma, um, rather than letting it have fetal demise with the yeah. eruption. So that's, yeah. that's kind of what I was getting at. Uh, all right. Uh, how do I learn more about, well, how, do, how do attendees learn more about interpreting and generating images in obstetric ultrasound? Oh, it's complicated. We have special programs. I have School of Ultrasound, so it's, <laughs> it's really, I can't answer this question because actually if you are talking about detection of, uh, of anomalies, uh, it, it's a it's long process of learning and uh, because there's too many an anomalies. If you are talking about just heart, congenital heart anomalies, uh, according to, uh, to nomenclature, is more than 300 uh, different uh, names of anomalies congenital so it's huge huge amount of information how about more on the on the kind of topics that we covered today like the point of care rapid identification uh triage call it ultrasound yeah. findings how many scans do you think people need and, and where can they go do you know to learn more i think uh, uh, ishok uh, has uh, guidelines about uh, basic ultrasound so i don't remember exactly the number i think it's around uh, 50 uh, but I, I, I may be uh, not right. So this is, I believe that it's at least 50 ultrasound uh, with, uh, uh, with help. 
uh, with guidelines and after uh, also you need to, to, to have to, you can't start working uh, without support so of course in right. some situations right. you, you have no choice but you need to have support right. yeah and in, in other content areas we've found that the, the research has been done on how many scans to do for competence i don't know specifically on these applications but for a lot of the ones that i'm more familiar with it's about 25 to 30 scans usually to sort of establish baseline competence uh, so on that end you know what kind of options do you know of any for simultaneous reporting or viewing for a second opinion we talked about how the application enables kind of teleguidance or you know one-on-one -on -one, like a facetime kind of experience do you know of anything that's kind of more institutionalized where people can call a friend or get help uh, in when they need it? No, I don't know. I think it's the okay. it's exactly what we need to develop because uh, I believe that uh, because of uh, so many many uh, many people can get this machine uh, because of price and because of simplicity how you can use. So actually, maybe the, in the future uh, we need to think how to develop uh, this support online support. And uh, right now, I, it's, 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 uh, I was going to say, it's right now, people really depend on their local networks of experts yeah. uh, and just have a phone. And if you have a phone number, you can get help um, if you know yeah. you can call someone. Yeah. And so. we also think, need to think about medical legal implications. So all this, so it's not not so easy, I think. Right. Right. OK, um, I think we have time for maybe one more question here. Uh, we got most of these. Uh, I'm going to leave all of these for kind of follow up. Yeah, I, I, there, there's this, this question about liability and what to do about it. Um, one person's bringing up hearing about a case where someone uh, looked at placenta position, but they missed that the baby, the fetus was anencephalic. Uh, so, you know, do you have any kind of comments on liability and, and management? Uh, because I work in different uh, countries, so I think we have different situations about li liabilities. Uh, and uh, but what 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 I think it's important to explain for for parents, for mother that what type of scan are you doing, so that you are not doing the scan to search for anomalies because uh, the situation is different, machine is different, so uh, this is not uh, the purpose of this scan. So I think it's very important actually before every scan. To explain what is the purpose of the scan, what we will achieve, and what will be clinical outcome of this scan. Yeah, when we face it with all applications, just be very clear with patients. I think that's good advice. All right, well, we've reached the top of the hour here. Uh, we will follow up with all of these questions uh, afterward. Whoever we didn't get to, um, we'll be able to send people email responses to your questions. So thanks everybody for participating. Uh, I'm gonna let Jenez and our friends at AIUM take it home here and close us out. We did have a couple of questions about color Doppler and whether uh, Claris uh, offers color Doppler and the answer is yes, absolutely. Um, so if we didn't get to your question and you also provided consent to share your information with Clarius, we will be happy to follow up with the unanswered questions by email in the coming week. Um, again, please feel free to provide consent in the closing survey. Then we'll also be able to email you a link to the um, a PDF of the slides that you saw today in the presentation, as well as a webinar recording and some additional video tutorials. Uh, to learn more, we invite you to visit clarius.com slash classroom for short POCUS video tutorials. Um, more will be made available, um, including all the ones that you saw here today very shortly. A huge thank you to you, Dr. Ushakov and Dr. Frankel, and a thank you to all of you for joining us here today. Have a wonderful rest of your day and keep scanning. Thank you very much. Thank you.